Hello everybody and welcome back to Learning in Technology. My name's Frank and I'm glad that you're here. In this video, I want to talk about Microsoft Teams and I want to talk about some of the new features that have recently become available in Microsoft Teams. Now, some of those new features, you may see videos on them and say, oh, I want to use that feature, but they're not working for you. Don't worry, in this video, I'll show you a couple of workarounds that I had to go through in order to make sure that those features were available to me. It can be a little bit tricky, and to be honest, a little bit discouraging if you've tried it out and it's not working for you. What's going on? Well, you'll see me demonstrate it, and you'll see those features working for me after I do a couple of little tricks. Let's have a look. In previous videos, I've shown you how we could go in and we could start a new meeting. So if I go in and I say meet now, You'll notice that this time an entire new window came up and before when I was doing the other videos the meeting actually took place inside of Teams. There's a reason for this. Now I've already shown you that you have to go on to your settings and you have to enable the new meeting experience and then you have to go in and you have to restart Teams. However, that won't always work right away and it's a little bit of a workaround that I discovered. What you'll need to do is instead of meeting, you'll have to do a scheduled meeting at least once. And when you go into schedule a meeting, we'll call this new style meeting. So we'll go into new style meeting and then I'll invite a couple of attendees. I'll invite uh, Bender and I'll invite uh, Clark into this meeting. And then we'll schedule it today. So right now it's 2.34. I'm actually going to schedule this at 2.30, a little bit before the time right now. And I'll make this a little bit of a longer meeting. Let's make this a hour long. And I could put locations. Notice right now I've got this in the Save the World Project Space Base Construction Channel. And I'll now send out the invitation. And if I go to my calendar, you'll notice that it has that new style meeting starting to be constructed there and it's actually going to be there already all I need to do is go back to teams go back to calendar and you can see I can join this meeting and when I join off of the schedule it'll open up this separate window from teams and the first time I schedule a meeting it'll do this and the nice thing is of course subsequent to this if I go into teams and I just say meet now it'll continue with the new style of meeting experience because I've got the settings. It was a little gl <clears throat> glitch that I found. I was like, what's going on? How come every time I start a meeting, it's still within Teams, I don't get this new style? And I do want the new style. I can put on my video. I think right now I don't have a webcam going. Maybe I do. Yeah, my webcam's turned off at the moment. But uh, so I could have my webcam going in here. Um, I can join the meeting. And when I join the meeting, you'll notice a few things. I get a lot of the same type of environment that I would have in the in the old style of meeting. So I'm joining this meeting now. But you'll notice that my bar no longer is a hover bar. It's actually sitting up top here as uh, as part of the, the window itself. I really like this a lot. I always found it a little bit of a hassle to have to hover to get it. You'll notice I get the same commands here. I have the participants showing, that's why that's highlighted. I can go into the chat and I can see my chat here. I can raise a hand. I really like this because when I raise a hand now, it actually sets a notification here so that I know that a hand is raised. I don't have to be in the participant view. In the chat room view, I can see that somebody's raised a hand. I can pop there and I can see that it was actually myself who raised that hand. I'll take my hand down. You can see it disappears. So I really like that. We have all of the chat features that we had before. You'll notice there's a new one here, which is a delivery option. So I could set it to important and I could say welcome. So I set that to important. It just gives it a little bit of a different flag on there. Um, I get my ellipse in here for more actions. We'll come back to that in just a moment. I have the leave button where I can hang up and go away from the meeting. Or if I drop this down, I can end the meeting for everyone. If I leave the meeting, anybody who's still there can chat without me. If I end the meeting, it ends it for everybody. This is especially useful in a academic or a school setting where <clears throat> I don't necessarily want the students to linger in the classroom. Um, you can also go in and share uh, items from your screen as well. I've shown that in previous videos, <clears throat> but I use that a lot of times to share the whiteboard, microphone, microphone mute, video mute, and then of course if I go into the participants, 
uh, when I have some more in here, in here, I can mute them all. I can I can work with those. I'll, I'll do that in a moment. I'm going to have some folks join us in a second. Underneath the ellipse, you'll notice that I can set my own device settings to make sure my audio and video is working. I can have meeting notes so we can take notes for the meeting, which is good to have sort of a trans, uh, somebody scribing some of the meeting notes in there. It takes a few moments to set it up the first time. So now I'll have meeting notes in here and now I've got nice meeting notes. And you'll notice again, if I go back, the meeting notes will be separate from my from my meeting so I can actually keep my notes to the side, have my meeting here, have notes over here. I really like using this option as well to split my screens. If I go into here as well, I can go in to show the meeting details, gives me information. I can also copy the join info if I want to send that to somebody so they can join via a code. And I can go into uh, the gallery. We'll have when I have participants in there. I can apply the same background effects that I had before in the previous videos. If you go into background effects, I have a number of background effects to make it look cool. So, for example, we can be out in space here. I, am, I have to have my video for that. I have my video turned off at the moment. And if I go into, uh, I can turn on live captioning. I discussed that in a separate video as well. But it basically transcribes, or doesn't transcribe because it doesn't keep a copy of it. But it goes in and everything I say is put into uh, text at the bottom of the window. Currently, it's only in English. And currently, it doesn't get recorded. But uh, that, I anticipate, will change over time. And we can record the meeting, keypad and incoming video. The big ones that everybody's excited about is the ability to do a large 7x7 gallery, the ability to do together mode, which puts us into an auditorium together, and the ability to focus, which means that you clean up and it just focuses on the content currently being presented, whether that's somebody speaking or somebody sharing, for example, a PowerPoint slide deck. Let's go grab some other participants and have them join the meeting. A quick add-in here. I've created a little channel here called the desktop trick. I want to just show you that when I go into my settings here and I go into my turn on new meeting experience, one thing that's very important that you do is do not close and restart Microsoft Teams by hitting the close button here. What you'll need to do is go down to Teams on your taskbar, right click and choose quit. And that will actually stop Teams completely. And then when you relaunch it, that setting will take effect. And now when you go in, you've actually made those settings sticky, so to speak. Okay, let's continue on. You'll notice that I have myself as well as three other participants currently in this meeting. And I've sort of done some experimenting and it seems to be about a minimum of four people that have to be in a meeting before together mode will become active. So if I go into the ellipse here, you'll notice that I still only have the regular gallery because I don't have uh, 49 people. And that you seven by seven is the grid you can get with a large grid. And unfortunately, um, I don't have that many extra computers and I don't have that many extra action figures. I know you'd think a guy like me has got all the action figures in the world. No, I actually don't have that many. So I don't have 49 people that can join us and I don't have 49 devices to demonstrate this. So you're just going to have to take my word and Microsoft's word that if you have more than 49 people in your meeting, the large grid will work. But what I can show you is the together mode. So because I have four or more people in this meeting, I have the together mode. And when I click on that, it's going to actually take all of the faces and it's going to put us all into this together mode. Now, this isn't looking great because um, I, I look great, but I, but ben, Bender looks great, actually. I think Bender is pretty sharp, but uh, poor old Peter Parker looks uh, kind of washed out because his eyes have uh, collapsed and uh, Clark Kent looks like he's moving because it's trying to figure things out. But you get the idea. It'll it will all look like we're in an auditorium. And Microsoft is actually working on some additional type of functionality here. There, I've, I've seen a coffee shop template. And in the coffee shop template, I only saw three individuals in that particular together mode. So I am hoping that 
they'll reduce the amount of people that need to be together to be in together mode and that they will have some different templates. I'm not totally fond of the lecture hall one, but I do understand why they're using that. It, it's a little bit more uniform here, but I think it's gonna look great when we can be in a coffee shop or a picnic uh, table or something along those lines, because it will psychologically, uh, they've, they've done studies, prove that we'll f feel more connected. And let's go back to the gallery. Okay, so we're now we're now back to the gallery. So it's not a toggle on the together mode, it's actually the gallery. I momentarily lapsed there. So there we go. So there's everybody here all ready to meet, and that was showing you how to do together mode. I'm now gonna go in and end the meeting. Nobody talking behind my back once we're done. Take care, and hopefully that was helpful. Well, I hope that was useful for you, and I hope that you enjoyed meeting all my teammates here at Learning and Technology. So if you want more videos, subscribe. If you want to get notified, hit the bell, all that good stuff. I found that it was pretty frustrating for me when I was first trying to use those new features and I had to really figure out some of the glitches there uh, for me starting the new meeting and or hitting quit instead of close for Microsoft Teams for those features to activate was one thing that kind of was a little bit tricky. And then uh, having making sure that I had at least four or more people in a meeting in order to use together mode. I have yet to do 47 people so or 49 people, so I won't be able to use that 7x7 seven seven grid anytime soon, but I think you got the idea from the video. If you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and post those below. I think I've already asked you to hit like and subscribe a couple times already, but please do that. And you can watch some of the other videos that I've created on this channel. I'll do a lot more with Teams, but I'm also going to expand into other areas as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.